LA this week. I'm Anna Margos. Will the blue campaign stop sex trafficking in its tracks? Find out about this joint effort between the city and the Department of Homeland Security, which trains officers on what to do. Tales of exceptional bravery from LA City Fire Department personnel at the LA Fire Foundation's awards ceremony. I'm Gil Reyes with the story next. It's unbelievable to me that here we are, you know, it's, it's a dream come true. I'm Rasha Goel. Up next, the latest on the newest recruits that joined the Los Angeles Fire Department. Hello and welcome to LA This Week. Thanks for joining us. I'm Yana Kay. Well, human and sex trafficking is alive and well in the City of Angels, but local and federal leaders have now teamed up to stop the epidemic dead in its tracks with the Department of Homeland Security's Blue Campaign. Here's Anna Marcos with more. Human trafficking victims are invisible if you don't know what to look for, and yet you could find them anywhere on street corners, often the unwilling victims of prostitution rings, in sweatshops, living in your apartment building, in homes, cleaning people's houses, and taking care of children. California is one of the top destinations, unfortunately, for trafficking. Mayor Eric Garcetti and the Department of Homeland Security have teamed up to stop human trafficking in L.A. with the Blue Campaign, a program to help train the LAPD, the Port of L.A. Police, Airport Police, and workers in the Housing Department on what signs to look for in human trafficking victims. Maybe it's a domestic worker uh, in someone's home that you can see who never seems to be gone, doesn't have any time off. When you see people who are much older with somebody much younger in situations that don't look safe or uh, late at night, long after there would be curfews. Some of the most common uh, things to look for is when people feel nervous around the suspected, who, whom you suspect is a trafficker. City leaders have no hard numbers, but they estimate there could be thousands of human trafficking victims in LA. There is a, mis a, a tremendous misperception uh, that human trafficking is a third world problem and nothing could be further from the truth. Uh, tragically, it occurs in cities and towns throughout the country. The problem is rampant in the North San Fernando Valley. And it's completely unacceptable. How do you have 13 and, thir 13 and 14 year old kids being trafficked for sex in the San Fernando Valley and everybody turn a blind eye? Pamphlets and flyers will soon appear at bus stops, at the airport, and other public places to give everyone the tools and knowledge to report and stop human trafficking in its tracks. I'm Anna Marcos for LA This Week. Now, if you suspect someone has become the victim of human or sex trafficking, you can call the Department of Homeland Security at 866-DHS2-ICE. Well, won't it be nice once the LA River gets restored so we can use it for recreation? Well, restoration plans are underway, but part of the plan comes with a heavy price. As Gil Reyes reports, city leaders weigh the pros and cons of buying one stretch of land near Cypress Park. I'm going to be in this. <laughs> Oh, that's so cute. One key portion of the LA River restoration project won't come cheap. 252 million bucks. That's the estimated cost of buying this land with the environmental cleanups needed to turn the area into park space. But Councilman Mitch O'Farrell says it's worth it. I'm hopeful that the rest of my colleagues will support this so we can have the choice of actually helping create the vision for the river that we've all been working on for the past Decade, several decades now. The city considers buying 40 plus acres next to the LA River, known as the G2 parcel. It's where the old Taylor Railroad Yard used to be. Decontamination of the soil would be needed to turn this area into park space for the public. Critics of the purchase say it's too expensive, but supporters say buying the land is crucial for the LA River <laughs> restoration project. That's a plan to revitalize 11 miles of L.A. River to its natural state for kayaking, hiking, and preservation of native species. Supporters also say if the city does not buy G2, developers will, possibly spoiling what the mayor calls the crown jewel of the restoration plan. On the L.A. River, I'm Gil Reyes for L.A. This Week. 
Now, buying the land alone will cost the city $60 million. The price is also expected to rise the longer the city waits. Over at LAX, if you're one of the millions of passengers who travels on international flights, well, the process just got a bit smoother. Rasha Goel has more on a multi-million dollar connector, which allows domestic and international passengers to move between terminals. This long hallway is part of the Terminal 4 connector, a new piece of the LAX Central Terminal area that connects the airport's south side, which is Terminals 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8, with the Tom Bradley International Terminal. Not only is it going to greatly enhance security and convenience, but it's going to reduce the time it takes for our passengers to get to their flights. The Terminal 4 connector, a $148 million investment, saves time for passengers by giving them a direct post-security route between terminals. International passengers with connecting flights would now be coming through this TSA screening area and would be easily able to access the south side terminals. You see how quickly TSA screening can be when you have only connecting passengers and not the new passengers going through. So this was a major addition uh, for this side of the airport. Domestic passengers no, not, no longer need to exit the terminals uh, or be rescreened for Tibet, which saves a lot of time. It's an area that's been put to good use. What was here before this building arose was some open space, but also some temporary facilities that were very complicated to demolish and then to rebuild on top of and to connect an infield to very important terminals. It's the first non-residential building in Los Angeles under the green building standards to, to achieve tier two. Uh, that's significant. Last year, the Tom Bradley International Terminal and the Southside Terminals had a combined 52 million passengers. That's about 70 percent of all the passengers who pass through LAX. This investment means we're celebrating more today than just this terminal, but more jobs, more visitors, more chances to show that here in L.A. we get the job done. The new connector is part of a $15 billion makeover that is being done at LAX, the nation's third busiest airport. At LAX, I'm Rasha Goel for L.A. This Week. Officials say the Terminal 4 connector is a significant milestone in creating post-security connections between all LAX terminals. While heading now to Cal State Northridge, where students are the first to take part in an increasingly popular metro program that offers discount rates on metro rides. Gil Reyes has the details. CSUN student Justin Cabanting saves time and gas money by using his Metro U-Pass instead of driving. A great alternative to driving by myself because it's an easy way to get around the traffic and also being able to get to class on time. The Universal College Student Fair Pass offers discount Metro rates for CSUN students with eight units or more. A sticker with an electronic chip goes on student IDs. Simply swipe IDs like tap cards to go anywhere Metro goes. Stickers for CSUN students cost 95 bucks per semester. No more driving to campus, paying for parking, or trying to find a space. And we all know what it's like to go to school and see all these cars suddenly descend, single passenger cars that uh, make it difficult for the neighbors, uh, make it tough for the students. And that's why public transportation makes so much sense. The two-year-old pilot program has become increasingly popular, recently signing up its 1,500th pass holder. Council member Paul Krikorian says it's a far different San Fernando Valley than when he was in school. But I can tell you when I was growing up here, um, this was hot rod culture territory. This was the place where people were committed to their cars. But we have changed that dramatically. When you look at the success of the Orange Line, when you look at the success of the Red Line, it's clear that the San Fernando Valley wants transit. The San Fernando Valley will use transit. And the generation of people going to this university, many of them may never own a car. Definitely, I would say take advantage of the U-Pass because it is definitely something that is slowly gaining momentum and it's only going to get better as long as we continue to support. Reporting from CSUN, I'm Gil Reyes for LA This Week. LA Trade Tech and Pasadena City College are among several other campuses participating. Get your pass by logging on to metro.net and typing U-Pass in the search. 
While over in Hollywood, residents want change, but not too much. They voiced their concerns during a recent get-together with Councilmember Mitchell Farrell as they tried to tackle some hot-button issues. Anna Marcos has more. Want to know your city leader better and ask what he's up to in your neighborhood? Some Hollywood residents do. The United Hollywood Neighborhood Council is holding a series of conversations with its leaders. And today, Councilmember Mitch O'Farrell is on the hot seat. Tops on the agenda, two initiatives to help regulate costume characters on Hollywood Boulevard and the Hollywood tour buses. We're restricting where they can park day in and day out along the boulevard. They load people in these buses. They sit in the sun uh, for hours sometimes. They don't give them refunds. Mm. And then they go on these chop tops into the hills. And I don't want to wait until a bad tragedy occurs. Another hot topic for residents, development. Many feel planned mega projects like a new Target store and a Millennium Project near Capitol Records will ruin Tinseltown's character. What is your position on spot upzoning for projects such as the Target building and the proposed Millennium Project, which are out of scale to their neighborhoods? I would argue that Hollywood doesn't need to go anywhere near the height of, of downtown Los Angeles ever. Hollywood is its own neighborhood with its own character. It will change. One thing that I, I know for sure is we need economic development and investment in quality projects. Residents also want to know what the city's doing about affordability and housing. Are there other plans to provide housing for seniors, low-income residents, and the Hollywood workforce? Great question about the number one crises facing the city. We are pricing Angelinos out of being able to live in Los Angeles. O'Farrell says he's got seven initiatives pending in city council on affordable housing and several affordable housing projects about to come online. He's obviously gotten very involved in Hollywood, has been for a long time. And I think that he was very forthcoming in his answers. Even on the controversial stuff, whether it be an inte uh, integrity initiative or Millennium, you know, we may not agree, but at least I get a sense of who he is and why he thinks the way he does. Traffic, homelessness, jobs, the list is long. Residents say they may not always see eye to eye with O'Farrell, but at least they know they've got his ear at City Hall. I'm Anna Marcos for LA This Week. Councilmember David Rue has also been a former guest at the Conversation Series. Well, how does a free computer sound to you? Well, your neighborhood could be next in line to benefit from an innovative recycling program started by the agency that oversees this station. Gil Reyes has details from Van Nuys. Nice to meet you. Congratulations. Put it to Van Nuys Councilmember Nuri Martinez hands out free refurbished computers to about 100 local families at the YMCA. You know, the Y has done an amazing job in terms of programming and providing services for our young people, but the technology piece is what's missing. A lot of our families just can't afford a computer at home or can't afford the internet. Nuri, nice to meet you. Very nice to meet you. Thank you for coming. But today, families in need are getting up to speed. They'll be receiving free refurbished computers and a separate hotspot device, which comes with four years of free internet, all sponsored by the YMCA. It's all part of the city's Our Cycle LA program. It takes outdated city department computers and fixes them for families in need. The idea comes from the city's Information Technology Agency, or ITA, the agency that oversees LA This Week and Channel 35. Anytime that you're giving a family, with children especially, an opportunity to get connected, to get online, to get homework done, to, to learn great things, it's always special, it's always unique. There's so many different great communities in LA and it's our pleasure to be able to help. They mentioned you can do computer programming, like coding, and that's something I've actually really been interested in. And it'll be a lot easier now with a computer at home. Hi, Ron. Nice to meet you. Thank you for coming. Hi. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Councilmember Martinez calls the giveaway an investment in solving problems in her district, like homelessness. We need our, our generation to be informed, knowledgeable, and have a good education to come back to communities like Van Nuys and help us fix 
you know, some of these issues. Today I want them to take away the message of, today we gave you a computer, somebody took a chance on you, please pay it forward moving on and come back to communities like Van Nuys and help it make it better. In Van Nuys, I'm Gil Reyes for LA This Week. City leaders plan to hand out more free refurbished computers to other communities throughout LA. Low-income families in Baldwin Village, Koreatown, various public housing units, and senior centers, San Pedro and South Central LA have also benefited. In Panorama City, a group of new firefighters are ready to save lives as they join the elite team of the LAFD. They showed off their skills and celebrated at a recent graduation ceremony. Rasha Goel has more. At the age of 12 was my first introduction to the fire department and uh, it was actually uh, my mom calling 911 for the first reason or the first time and uh, she actually had a heart attack and because of the, the work of the Los Angeles City Fire Department she's still alive. Luis Milroy, who as a young boy knew he wanted to become a firefighter with the Los Angeles Fire Department, was also recognized with the top overall recruit award at the ceremony. And for his mom, it's a moment she won't forget. It's unbelievable to me that here we are, you know, it's, it's a dream come true. 49 recruits join the Los Angeles Fire Department after a 20-week rigorous training curriculum. And today they join together to celebrate their accomplishments. <laughs> But getting here has also been a lot of hard work and determination for the recruits. We cover so many different things. It's our hose line operations, our ladder operations, uh, emergency medical technician review, hazardous materials, uh, urban search and rescue. The, the list of things that we cover is very extensive and very difficult. Everything was pretty challenging. Uh, physically, mentally, uh, we'd be here for 10 hours a day in the sun working hard. We work out in the morning and then come and do uh, skills evolutions in the afternoon and then they're studying when we go home at night. In this year's batch, five recruits were between the ages of 18 to 22, 41 recruits were between 23 to 32 years old and three recruits were between 33 to 37 years old. Among them are two Marines and one National Guardsman. And after years of having no graduates, I'm so proud while well, I've been mayor, this is the eighth class of firefighter recruits that we will graduate. It is important for us to have firefighters and to support them. As the hats come off and the gear comes on, now is when the real work of putting out fires begins. In Panorama City, I'm Rasha Goel for LA This Week. Well, from a graduation ceremony to an award ceremony, honoring some of LAFD's finest. And here's something interesting. Many of the department's top awards for excellence this year don't involve fighting fires, but they do involve bravery. Gilrea shows us. LAFD engineer Darren Lair receives the department's highest honor, the Medal of Valor, for swift action in the pounding surf off the coast of Kauai, Hawaii last year while on vacation. A young lady got swept off into the water and I basically brought her out of the water, rescued her and that's why I'm here today. A packed house here at the Westin Bonaventure Hotel for the Los Angeles Fire Foundation's awards ceremony. 12 LA City Fire Department personnel are being honored for going above and beyond the call of duty three dogs are being recognized as well. Congratulations to members of the Human Remains Detection Team. Their keen sense of smell helped locate four missing bodies hidden beneath debris from a structure fire in the Westlake District in June. As a human remains handler, it's kind of that balance you walk between being proud of the work your dog has done, but also knowing that that means they've found someone who's lost their life. Um, but we take, we take pride in knowing that we've helped get some closure for that family. Another awardee, engineer Tyler Varnum, took over the wheel of an out-of-control fire engine when the driver fell ill and passed out. It was a moving vehicle, yes. We were driving emergency to a call, and uh, we hit a few things going emergency, and I was able to get up to the front seat and get that uh, rig to stop. Proceeds from the awards luncheon go to the LAFD. We hope that this will yield some revenue that we can spend on equipment, technology, training, and youth programs for the fire department. 
We have four uh, firefighter magnet high schools now. So it buys equipment for those kids to learn how to become a firefighter. So God bless our Los Angeles Fire Department, each and every one of you who has answered the call. Going above and beyond. From the Westin Bonaventure Hotel in downtown Los Angeles, I'm Gil Reyes for LA This Week. The Lifetime Achievement Award is also given to retired Assistant Chief Frank Borden. Borden is the father of community CERT teams, which have expanded nationwide. Well, free activities and food for young people and their families, job opportunities for local residents, and a safe place for Angelinos of all ages to spend Friday evenings. Rasha Goel has more on a program being kicked off at the Normandy Recreation Center. Mayor Eric Garcetti recently kicked off Fall Friday Nights, a program to keep parks and recreation centers across the city open late with special activities for young people and families. We're creating safe places for young people to be in, and this is the second year that we've taken uh, our summer programs and pushed them into the fall for Fall Friday Nights. We've extended the hours and added a lot of additional family programming and youth programming. And it's really just to, to get our youth and families uh, engaged in our parks later into the evening on the weekends. Fall Friday Nights is an extension of Summer Night Lights, a signature mayor's office initiative that just concluded its ninth year. It all started in response to a tragic shooting near a closed public park. This began in Glassell Park, in a single park. When there was tragedy and we lost a young woman, a teenage girl who was walking with her boyfriend and who's no longer with us because we had a park that was closed a block and a half away where they could have been safe. So we started a program that summer called At the Park After Dark. And then with Mayor Villaragosa, we grew that to eight parks and then 16 and 32 parks. And as mayor, this has been a core part of my work as well. The program runs from September 23rd to November 10th from 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. at night. It's a lot of crafts, a lot of programs, sports, different leagues, activities, things like that. Um, that you know, kids of all ages and uh, families could come out and participate on a Friday night. It also helps build a relationship between the LAPD and community. That's really what our goal is for this community, is to make it where everyone feels that they're safe and can get together as families and bring the children out and have fun activities. More information on Fall Friday Night's locations can be found at EmpowerLA.org. A fun way to also get involved with your local community and give back. I'm Rasha Goel for LA This Week. According to officials, in 2015, 20 of 32 communities surrounding summer night light sites saw a reduction or no change in gang-related crime. While the city of LA welcomes a delegation from South Korea, a call for artists to create a new art project in Little Armenia and an upgraded baseball field at the Toberman Recreation Center is a home run for local kids. All these stories in City Beat. Mayor Eric Garcetti and Council District 4 Councilmember David Rue attended a luncheon for Mayor Byung Soo Sa of Busan, South Korea, hosted by Sister Cities of Los Angeles. Councilmember Rue says these kinds of visits help foster and strengthen relations between the two countries. And our strength comes from uh, learning from each other's and, and uh, from each other's differences. LA City Council Member Mitchell Farrell and the Department of Cultural Affairs are calling for artists to create a public art project at this corner of Hollywood and the 101 freeway that will serve as the official gateway to Little Armenia, similar to this rendering of a gateway marker planned in Koreatown. The gateway will serve to acknowledge the contributions of one of the largest Armenian populations in the country. The budget for this project is $350,000, of which the selected artist will receive a stipend. For info on submissions, call 213-473-7013. It's also an opportunity to beautify the area and highlight its significance at the same time. The Department of Rec and Parks and Councilmember Gil Cedillo recently celebrated improvements to the baseball diamond at the Toberman Recreation Center. Improvements include a new backstop and an upgrade to the infield dirt mix. A new batting cage was also installed for baseball team training and practice sessions. The upgrades were made possible through a grant, which will also allow the Recreation Center to offer reduced registration rates in an effort to get more kids involved in sports in one of the city's lower income areas. I'm actually glad it did happen because we, um, we're, we're kind of 
in the need for a batting cage. Have them come and practice, have them come and be responsible um, players, which will then turn them into responsible students, hopefully. Teach them about winning, losing, sportsmanship. Well, turning 90 can be loads of fun if you're celebrating at the Griffith Park Boys Camp. Now, the camp program run by the Department of Recreation and Parks marked its 90th birthday with a free open house for all the kids. Anna Marcos takes us to all the fun. Zip lining anyone? This was a chance to test your grit while getting some fresh air and a taste of nature. The Griffith Park Boys Camp threw a free family fun day for the kids to celebrate the 90 candles on its birthday cake. This is a, a gem, a gem in our city, in the urban city, where many kids don't get exposed to the environment, uh, get exposed to the wilderness, uh, to know about their env uh, environment, and it's very important. Since the 20s, the camp has been introducing Angelino children to the great outdoors. Here they learn to build new skills, become team players, and meet other kids from all walks of life. For many of the children, according to camp supervisors, the experiences have been life-changing. It was the first time they may have saw a deer, may have shot their first arrow. When you were here as campers, you were all just campers. Um, there was really no rich or poor. Everybody was just a camper with a sleeping bag in the bunk. Smokey Bear even stopped by for the party, while the kids learned to hit bull's eyes and test new rock climbing skills. All in all, a good time in the wild before heading back to L.A.'s own urban wilderness. I'm Anna Marcos for L.A. This Week. Now, although the Griffith Park Boys Camp is primarily for boys, there's also a girls camp called Camp Hollywood Land. Well, for more information on camp programs, call 323-664-0571. I'll go back in time and experience what L.A. used to look like during the original Farmer's Market Fall Festival. Grab your bike for a sick la via through downtown and enjoy all the fix-ins during vegan Oktoberfest. All this in this week's Things to Do. Every year, the original Farmer's Market celebrates the fall harvest with a family-friendly Farmer's Market Fall Festival. A free gathering that includes crafts, demonstrations, live music, and a lively petting zoo. While celebrating the harvest may seem out of place in a city as populous as L.A., there was a time when rolling farmlands were the primary attraction in Los Angeles. So bring your family and go back in time to what L.A. used to look like in the 1930s. There will be a pie-eating contest, photo contest, and great country and western swing, bluegrass, and banjo music throughout the weekend. It all takes place at the original Farmer's Market at Fairfax and 3rd on October 15th and 16th. For more, visit FarmersMarketLA.com. Time to start planning your car-free day through downtown L.A. as the next Ciclavia rolls through the heart of the city. Boyle Heights, Chinatown, downtown L.A. and Westlake will host the country's largest open streets event. Streets will be closed to cars and open for cyclists, pedestrians, runners and skaters to use as a recreational space. Ciclavia provides the chance for participants to enjoy a fun day connecting with their fellow Angelinos and their city in a whole new way. Participants are welcome to walk, bike, skate, run on Sunday, October 16th. For a detailed map, visit ciclavia.org. Vegan Oktoberfest is a traditional Oktoberfest celebration featuring great vegan food and beer. Unlimited pours of more than 50 different beers, more than 30 different food vendors. Not only will Vegan Oktoberfest feature stein holding contests, costume contests, and chicken dancing contests, but guests will enjoy oompa and dance music from some of the best performers in Southern California. The festival takes place Saturday, October 15th at LA Center Studios, located at 450 South Bixell Street. For more, visit veganoctoberfest.com. And that's a look at some things to do. Well, that's going to do it for this edition. I'm Yana Kane from all of us here at LA This Week. Thanks for joining us. A reminder that you can catch us online at lacityview.org. You can also follow and like us on Facebook. We'll see you back here next week for more of LA This Week.